Hello and welcome to this video from Applied Acoustics. My name is Matt and today we're going to be going over mini beacons. We're going to be going over how to activate the beacons for operation, how to configure the beacons and how to charge the beacons. In this video you will see two models, a 1019 which is our older generation and our brand new 1119 model. We'll also be using an 1119D. Even though these are the beacons we are using, they're still applicable to other beacons in the mini beacon range, such as the 1015s and the 1113s. If you require more information, visit our website. We'll also be going over the 1082. It's really difficult to talk about a mini beacon without talking about a 1082 because they're designed to work hand in hand. 1082 is a charger and beacon configurator. Also it allows you to run some basic diagnostics on a beacon which we'll be going through in this video also. Thank you for joining me. Let's get started. So to start with, let's take a 1019. To turn on and activate a 1019, you have to use this small metal PRV slash switch at the top. It's defined by the triangle, so here we're on charge. So if you want to turn the beacon on, simply twist it, like so. We're now in the on position. As said, this is a PRV also, so all you have to do is pull up on this metal rod and you should see an O-ring protrude. You should always vent the PRV and the beacon after every charge cycle. Charging the beacon creates pressure internally due to the battery, so it needs to be vented. So let's move on to an 1119. To turn on 1119 is slightly different. You're gonna need a screwdriver, and a venting screw. To turn it on, simply use the screwdriver to twist the top to the on position. Equally, if you need to put it on charge, use charge. To vent, as I said, it's a separate PRV. So what you're gonna need is a small screw. So this is an M3 size screw here. Alternatively, we've found a serial header works about the same. It's about the same size. So all you have to do is just screw this in a couple of turns so, then you can just pull this here. As you can see, this is now vented. So unscrew and just make sure that it's sealed. And that's the venting and turn on complete. So let's start on 1082s. 1082 has four buttons, a back button, a cycle button, a next button, and an enter button. You're going to use all four of these buttons to make a beacon work and configure it. To make the smart switch work, it's going to have to be plugged in and the beacon's going to have to be on. So with that done, let's just press the enter button and it'll start searching straight away. It's an automatic connection and it will try and pick the beacon up as soon as it can. So here we see the model number 1119, option three. This is the X blue option and its configuration is AAE channel 12. That actually means it's HPR4 channel 12. The HPR channels are just hidden in the AAE channel set, um, just for legacy reasons. As I say, this does this whenever you plug it in as standard. But if say you want to plug into another beacon and find out what that is, simply go to fast ID beacon, press enter, and a search will take place. So we can see here, again, it's the same beacon and it will be the same channel set. If you want to change that, we can go to beacon config, press enter, channel, press enter again. And then we're going to go to a quick set channel for Sigma 2. So we'll go down one. We've got Sigma 2 quick set, press enter. And we're going to select channel one. So it says waiting and selected. And then again, to confirm the changes happened, the beacon will search. So now we can see the model number, again the option, but it's configured to Sigma 2, quick set equals one. So Sigma 2, quick set one. So now we've been over the basics of the 1082 and how to set a channel, let's move into something a bit more complicated like setting an X blue channel. So let's go over an X blue channel. There's a lot of components to the x channels, so let's just go over how this is done and set up using a 1082 smart switch. We go cycle down to beacon config, 
we press enter, we go to channel, and then we just cycle down to the Xblue channels. They're a set menu in the smart switch. Press enter. Then we have the interrogation frequency. So we can just cycle to set this to the frequency we want. Press enter. Got the RC code, so we'll just change that to one. And we'll press enter again. And then we have the TAT extension. So we're gonna set this to 200. So we're just gonna cycle down, set that to 200. We're just gonna move across with the next button. And again, we're gonna cycle this. So let's cycle this to 200, like we said. And then we just press enter. We select the config, pressing enter to confirm. I'll go for a waiting stage and say selected. And then as a confirmation, it'll do the searching. And then it will show on the top what's going on. So it'll say configuration, X blue. Interrogate frequency, 21 kilohertz. The RC will be 01. And the TAT extension will be 200 milliseconds. And that's an X blue channel complete. Let's move on to charging now. To use a 1082 as a power unit, you're going to have to input some sort of mains power. Provided with every 1082 smart switch is power block. It's a universal power block. It can take in 110 volts up to 230 volts and it outputs a 30 volt DC. For a trickle charge, all you're going to need to do is plug this into the bottom of the unit. So this plugs in to the bottom of the 1082 on the left, like so. You won't see any sort of indication to say it's being used. So we're going to cycle down to trickle charge. We press enter. At the moment it's off. We're going to cycle to on and we're going to press enter again. Say selected and you'll see a little power icon on the top right is now showing. Trickle charge is really useful. It can keep a beacon topped up ready to go if you want to do a hot swap on something. It can also be used to raise the voltage levels in a battery that's been in storage for a long time, so a fast charge can be completed. We'll now move on to fast charge. So let's go over fast charging. To fast charge, simply cycle down to see the fast charge option. Press enter. It'll ask you to confirm the beacon is in charge mode on the back. Press enter again. And then it'll ask you to start charging. So once we hit enter, this will start the charge. So you get an elapsed time up on the front. It normally takes three hours to fully charge a beacon that's very low on voltage. If you try to charge a beacon and it's not in charge mode, whether this is a 1000 series or an 1100 series, it will say no status. So you need to just confirm that it is in charge mode. With that done, let's show you how to enable depth. For the next part, we're going to move to an 1119D model here. And we're going to show you how to turn on a depth sensor. It's really simple. On the main menu, you need to cycle down to beacon config. Press enter. Cycle down again to depth status. Press enter. And it says off at the top. So we're going to change that to an on by cycling and entering. Now we have depth on. If we want to turn it off, we simply have to go to the cycle button and press enter again and it's now off. Enabling depth telemetry will reduce the life of the battery. However, it will greatly increase the positioning potential of the beacon. So we do recommend if it's available, use a depth sensor. For the final part of this video, we're gonna discuss responder tests. This is a really basic diagnostic tool that will allow you to see if the beacon is transmitting. Now I'm going to add the caveat, this will only tell you if the beacon is transmitting. It will not tell you if the beacon is transmitting at the right frequency or interval, but it will tell you if the beacon will transmit, and that's half a battle. To perform a responder test, simply cycle down on the main menu to responder test. Press enter, and set the key output from off to on. Every two seconds, the beacon should now emit a sound, like so. And 
And that's how to perform a responder test on a beacon. It's a great little tool and something to keep at the back of your mind. And that concludes the video. Thank you for joining us. We hope you found the video useful. If you require any more information on our beacons or any of our products for that matter, please visit us at appliedacoustics.com and from there you can find the relevant technical specifications and contact details if you have any more questions. We hope to see you again soon.